Bruce Richards, like many others, expects to see a surge in defaults as the year progresses, but bankruptcy is hardly a one-size-fits-all solution. Some companies will cease to exist. Others will restructure and emerge. Still, with no prospect of a quick economic recovery, it's difficult to devise a plan to stay afloat. I asked Lisa Donahue, global co-leader of Turnaround and Restructuring at Alex Partners, how she thinks companies will be approaching these challenges as the pressure of debt intensifies. It's going to be an, an individual type situation. U.S. Chapter 11 can actually be a quite effective tool. And, and remember, U.S. Chapter 11 is more about um, actual rehabilitation and fixing a company and having it come out on the other side, whereas sometimes in other countries, it's more about a managed wind down. So what a bankruptcy can do for some of these companies if they find that they're essentially running out of cash, which is one of your inflection points on figuring out if that's the right thing to do, is you can delever, you can more effectively um, you know, shed non-core businesses, you can effectively look toward closing unprofitable operations, things like that. So it's a tool um, that can be used to help some of these companies deal with some of these perhaps lingering problems that they'd, that they'd had. So it's not necessarily an end of the road, but it can possibly be a tool to help some of these companies out. Given the scope of bankruptcies, given the scope of the pain, given how much debt was built up over the decade ahead of this, how low do you expect some of the recoveries to be for debt investors? You know, predicting debt recoveries is not something that uh, I don't think anybody really wants to do. But what I will say is I was reading an analysis about the typical recovery time post a recession. And it is averaging somewhere around three to three and a half years to get back to equilibrium. And when I say equilibrium, I mean kind of normal operating back to pre-pandemic, pre-recession levels. So if you think about a three-year period to get back to where you were before, whatever you were doing from a manufacturing operational perspective, I don't necessarily think that the recoveries are going to be less than prior recessions, but I do think people are going to have to be patient and people are going to have to be creative and people are going to have to recognize that this is something that we've never seen before and that the strong companies will come out on the other side and smart management teams will proactively look for ways to extend their runway and to manage through a, a you know, lower productive environment to, to get to profitability on the other side. How concerned are you that a number of corporations are borrowing more and more money, billions of dollars to get to the other side when they don't know when the other side will be or what it will look like? You know, I'm, I'm less concerned with companies that are doing that because in order to preserve their value and in order to get to the other side, they need liquidity. So, and the capital markets are very frothy right now. There's a lot of liquidity out there. So I would say looking at not just the amount of debt, but how their debt behaves, what kind of debt they have, how long-term it is, how prompt it is, when their maturities are, what sort of flexibility they have built into their debt. Now, obviously too much debt is never a good thing, but I've talked with a good deal of CFOs and CEOs of healthy companies that did proactively go out and raise capital with the intent of managing their cash so that when they do get to the other side and it is clearer on what's going to happen, they can quickly pay it back down and delever. So it's not a question of issuing debt for debt's sake. It's a question of getting the flexibility that you need from a liquidity perspective to weather through whatever time period we're looking at with this, with this pandemic. Lisa, you talked about how we've seen a lot of bankruptcies in retail, certainly in energy. What's the next industry that you think is likely to get hit? Wow. <laughs> I don't think we're done with energy yet. I think oil and gas is, is going to continue to struggle for a whole host of macro fact factors that are not necessarily pandemic related. Um, I think we should be looking to see what's happening with real estate. We should, and then the longer this pandemic goes on, we may see larger enterprises that 
might normally not have any sort of distress end up having to go in distress. Um, automotive is ripe for um, ripe for disruption, given everything that's happening in their supply chain and moving toward electric vehicles. That's something that could be accelerated some of the changes that'll happen in that supply chain. I think aerospace and defense um, is an area that we're continuing to look at and see what um, what's happening there from a distressed perspective, from a supplier perspective to some of the, the big majors. Um, and obviously I, I mentioned hospitality. I think that the whole hospitality segment is geared on people moving and vacationing and um, having the ability to rent cars, stay in hotels, take cruises, fly on on planes. And as long as people aren't moving, that's a that's a sector of that all of that whole hospitality um, could could be in a lot of trouble. 